welcome to Flyboy episode 8. We're on Bryston, it's a lovely morning. I'll just show you. So, uh, uh, that's uh, Chris Gibson flying. We've got Richard over there, and Dave Fenton and Paul have arrived. Some lovely clouds in the background. So, it's a nice day. It's definitely an inversion. You can see the clouds in the distance. But uh, it's only about 10.30 now, so hoping the inversion will pop, but of course the sea breeze will be the enemy. The sea air is going to spoil everything if we don't get away soon enough. So I'm going to get in the air and uh, hopefully fly as far as possible. set a goal for as far as I can <laughs> even if I just land at my mum and dad's then that's all right but you know if we can fly to the mainland even better see you in the air
Hi there, so first of all, I'm back home now, it's the next day, and I just want to apologize for the lack of filming in this one, but I didn't actually know I was going to be making another episode until Richard, my friend Richard Perks, sent me a couple of videos from the flight. And um, so I felt that because there was a really good lesson from this flight yesterday, that I wanted to put a video out so I hope you enjoyed Richard's um, short um, videos from his excellent 360 camera, uh, which was pretty impressive. Um, Richard did very well. He actually flew to Portsmouth yesterday. And as you know, I landed at Boken Valley again, feeling a little bit disappointed. Um, and I had a chat with Richard afterwards and he had a, a very, very good flight. Um, and I just wanted to point out a couple of lessons that I'd learned. So, um, so number one, um, if you remember from the videos, I was a little bit lower than Richard uh, in the second thermal. That was like a, um, a kind of broken, uh, rubbishy bit of lift over the back of Bryston. It wasn't a good thermal, it was a very broken thermal. But the number one lesson that I learned from this flight yesterday, which I'd love to share with everyone, if if they don't already know this, it's probably more suited for beginner cross-country pilots, is that because I was underneath Richard, uh, I'd actually got a bit low, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, but because I was underneath him, I was looking up at him, and I was trying to fly depending on his position, because I wasn't getting as good a lift as he was. I was really, really struggling, but I was still placing myself underneath him, looking up, thinking, oh, Oh, he's there, oh, he's there, oh, he's there, um, oh, okay. And actually having a really hard time. So the lesson which really I, I really got yesterday is, and Richard told me this, he said, if you are underneath someone, it's near enough impossible to be able to, you know, thermal effectively, because you're trying to get the information from them, which you should be flying your own thermal. So if this ever happens to you, if you're directly underneath someone in a thermal, you need to fly your own thermal. And what Richard said to me yesterday was, in that situation, what he would do is just fly downwind. Don't waste any more time losing height in a situation like that. You need to fly downwind and lead out and go ahead and fly, fly away from that situation. Another mistake I made was that I, in that uh, broken thermal, I did a search upwind, if you notice from the video, flew even more upwind, which was actually a silly move because I was then getting myself even lower so by the time um, Richard and I decided to fly downwind from that uh, broken lift I was really a lot lower than him already so then he was able to fly a slightly different line left um, so that would be slightly more west than me over this wheat field where he managed to pick up a few uh, bits of lift got some zero turns and it turns in a zero as you can see from from the video And that was when I landed I actually went more to the west. I went over those um, trees in desperation um, And there's never it never works there because trees of course um, They're sucking in all that all, all of the the heat the the, the um, For photosynthesis they are actually sucking in all the energy and heat So it's a really bad spot there but I was desperate thinking, where can I go? And then of course I went into Boken Valley where it was blowing very strong, uh, not strong, but you know, Venturi down Boken Valley. The sea breeze was just pouring down there. And I went over the brown fields thinking, you know, maybe, but I'm so low now and I had to, to make a landing in a, in a field there. Um, so, and then I, I saw Richard, not very high, uh, I don't know, 100, 100 meters, 150 meters, I'm not sure how high he was. Um, and he was able to get the zero on the other side of Boken Valley, which is definitely a good thing because if you think about the wind is blowing from the back of Bryston, the wind is blowing down, 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 it's all going down, which is obviously uh, not conducive for thermals. And it's only when you get to the other side of Boken Valley, on that would be the east side, where it's actually slightly inclined up so the air is tr possibly triggering off there there's some brown fields there so Richard was really um, in the best position he had a bit more height and he was able to take that zero 
and then he I watched him fly all the way to Newport whilst I was packing up thinking <laughs> not again but you know it's it's a low moment um, when this happens but a lesson learnt you know um, don't waste time in um, really rubbishy lift don't be looking up at someone trying to um, map their climb you, you've got to fly your own thermal and if it isn't working just pretend they're not there what would you do if you were on your own and that's what you've got to do you've got to fly your own thermal if you're above someone it's a lot easier because you can it's still hard but you can actually drop down if they're circling you can drop down and you can join them and of course if you're side by side the same height as someone it's it's really easy because you can work together and it really works well but if you're underneath someone it's darn impossible it's pretty much impossible to to try and get into the same correct thermal if you're you know if you're struggling so hope hope that's helpful thank you for watching this uh, this episode um, I said to Richard I did feel a bit annoyed that I'd bombed out again but to me no flight is unsuccessful as long as you learn something from it and as of course the obvious thing that you're, you're you've landed safely um, so yeah hope you find that little little bit of uh, uh, experience helpful which um, you probably know already but it's just good to solidify some of these things uh, especially if you're a beginner and you're getting into cross-country remember fly your own thermal if you see someone thermaling away from you of course you fly to them you need to be straight to there um, but I'm specifically talking about if you're underneath directly underneath another pilot so don't don't sort of make my mistake which I did yesterday of trying to to sort of look up and oh well he's there oh oh he's there now oh where's the lift oh no I'm in sync okay turn again oh oh, oh where is he gone constantly trying to put yourself underneath someone just doesn't work so um, yeah that was it really um, it was actually sea breeze we were in the sea breeze yesterday so Richard did very very well to to get to where he did in Portsmouth um, and um, yeah so cool thanks for watching this episode sorry it's the lack of filming from my own camera uh, but I hope you enjoyed Richard's videos and he kindly said I could use them for, the, for, for my uh, flyboy video thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one and um, yeah, don't forget the Dragon Race is just a week away, so hope you'll be able to watch that video when I've finished it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See you on the next one.